Welcome. All right, so uh, what we have here is cosine uh, squared of alpha times cosine cotangent squared of alpha equals cotangent squared of alpha minus cosine squared of alpha. And so now we have our option of what are we going to do? Uh, which side should we choose, the left or the right? Now, we look at the right, and we could probably say that's probably more complicated, right? Um, and if I was going to do this, if I was going to simplify this right-hand side, what I would do is I would rewrite these in um, terms of sines and cosines where this is going to be sine um, squared of x over sine squared of x minus um, cosine squared of x. Now, over 1. Now, to go and subtract these, what I would have to do now is go ahead and combine, um, get the common denominators, which, which would be um, for me to do time, multiply it by sine squared of x times sine squared of x. And Still, I'm going to be able to see that's still not going to get me exactly where I want to be right off the bat. And plus, that's just a lot of extra work I don't want to do. Um, so, but that's what I would do to start up there. And you can continue working on that right-hand side if you'd like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this left-hand side because I see that I have a cotangent squared. And if I'm going to rewrite a cotangent squared, maybe one thing I might want to do is, or, or even my uh, cosine squared, that's cotangent over sine. So you know what? Since cotangent is cosine over sine, I'm going to want to rewrite cosine squared in terms of sine. Right? You always want to be thinking is how are these reciprocal identities going to relate you know, to each other? Or this cotangent, remember, is cosine over sine. So if I can rewrite cosine in terms of sine, I bet I can probably eliminate some sine functions. So remember, by using my trigonometric identities, sine squared plus cosine squared of theta, or x, equals 1. Therefore, to rewrite cosine in terms of sine, I'll just have to subtract sine squared of x on both sides. So therefore, cosine squared of x equals 1 minus sine squared of x. Now again, I don't know if this is the right way, you know, or this is the best or easiest way to do it. I'm just trying something to see what works. So I'm going to kind of forget about what I did on the right side, because that kind of seems like too much work for me to want to do right now. And I don't want to do it. So I'm going to try this. So I do 1 minus sine squared of alpha, because that's actually what we're doing for the problem. I just wrote the identities in whatever variable I wanted to, times cotangent squared. Now I'll apply distributive property. So I have cotangent squared of alpha times or minus um, sine squared of alpha. That just doesn't look right. Sine squared of alpha times cotangent squared of alpha. All right. Whew. Ah, well, that's nice. And then you guys can see here, if I rewrite cotangent squared of alpha in terms of sines and cosines, I have cotangent squared of alpha minus um, sine squared of alpha times, uh, let's see, that's going to be cotangent is going to be uh, cosine squared of alpha divided by sine squared of alpha where now you can see my sines divide out. So I'm left with cotangent squared of alpha minus cosine squared of alpha, which is exactly what I'm looking to get over there. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that you know, through my experience, I was able to try one side. And then I was like, eh, I don't think that's going to work. Let me go and try here. And originally, I, I was going to change cotangent into uh, 1 plus secant, which you could have done, or cosecant. But then I noticed is, well, cotangent quotient is sine over, or cosine over sine. If, he, if I rewrite cosine in terms of sines, exactly that's going to happen. Now, let's just go and see on this left-hand side. If I did cosine squared, um, oh, that's of x. So we're not talking about x's. We're talking about alphas. If I did this, if I just wanted to work on this right side, now I would have cosine squared of alpha times sine squared of alpha divided by sine squared of alpha. So now that you have common terms, um, cotangent, uh, so now I subtract them. I could subtract these and then factor it out. So I'd have cosine squared of alpha times 1 minus sine squared of alpha all divided by sine squared of alpha. OK. Yeah, and then I can convert 1 minus sine squared to cosine. Um, cosine, cosine, so it would be 1 minus, and that would be, OK. Yeah, I and mean, then that would go to cotangent, and that, and that would leave that as the 
um, sign. Okay, so it would work really either way. Um, don't really do concerned if you're missing out on one side. It's, you know, I just wanted to make sure, see, you could do it on both sides. I could work from here to get to there and work to there to get to there. That's all about verifying identities. Thanks.